Good morning. I'm Mary McGinn from the First United Methodist Church in DeKalb, and I'm glad to welcome you this fifth Sunday after Pentecost. We're so glad that you'll be joining us this morning. We'll share in music, prayer, and an inspiring message from our guest preacher, Mary Gay McKinney, as we open ourselves up to God's holy presence. At First United Methodist Church, we're all about loving, connecting, and serving. One of the ways that we can connect is for you to use the comments section to greet one another, tell us where you're from, send prayer requests, or just say amen. Another way to connect, especially if you're a first-time guest, is to connect to our text messaging system. Simply text the word welcome to 815-605-6688. When you do that, you'll receive a message from us. Click on the link in the message, fill out a brief form, and you'll receive messages about once a week updating you on the life of the church. Now let's prepare our hearts and our minds to God's presence as we begin our time of worship. Our liturgist this morning will be Linda Buer. Good morning. Would you please join me in the call to worship? Friends, what do you see? We see that God has set a path before us. What else do you see? We see that God is among us. And what else do you see? We see that God calls us to be prophets. Together, we will speak God's truth to injustice. Amen. And will you please join me in the hymn of praise, He Leadeth Me. please join us now for our opening prayer as we pray in unison. God of prophets, you call on all of us to be prophets. Like shepherds with their sheep, you guide us in the direction you wish us to go. 
You may clear the path of goodness and righteousness. You set a plumb line for us to follow, an example guiding us toward the way. May we be aware of your presence in our hearts today as we use this time to prepare for the journey to come. Amen. The scripture lesson from today is 1 Colossians verses 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. Paul thanks God for the Colossians. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 10. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, 
What shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered right. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell, upon, he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast and brought him into an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. May God bring these words of Jesus to life in our lives. Grace Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I will be focusing on the story of the Good Samaritan, but first, a story. It was September 8th, 2011. Our son, Will, U.S. Army combat engineer, had been deployed to Afghanistan earlier that year. I was awakened by an early morning phone call. Captain Rodriguez here, and I have some information about your son. He's been injured by an IED. Soon, he's gonna be out of surgery, and they'll make sure he phones you. Well, a phone call means he's still alive. Army in green suits at your door, well, We know what that means. Will spent several months at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. He arrived about three weeks after Walter Reed and the Bethesda Naval Hospital had been combined. His father and I were there many times and for many days during his early days of surgeries and rehab. It was amazing the dignitaries that stopped in, Leon Leon Panetta, other cabinet members that I can't even remember their names. President Obama came to see him. And generally, these were generally short visits, photo ops. Most of the visitors had not served in the military, and Will was polite, as he is, with the dignitaries, but their visits didn't seem to mean a lot. I thought to phone the office of my representative, Representative Adam Kinzinger, to see if he would be willing to visit with Will. He's been in the military and is serving even today in the Illinois National Guard. He's an insider. And when it comes to what Will had gone through and was experiencing, I thought Will might appreciate a visit from him. Now, I do realize that he is a controversial figure at the moment. I'm not asking you or telling you to like him or dislike him. But his office got back to me to say that he was busy, but that he would make time at some point to visit Will. Well, weeks went by, and I forgot about the request. And it was a sunny morning when a young woman phoned and asked if I would have time to speak with Representative Kinzinger. Of course, I said, my heart pounding, I don't speak to congressmen a whole lot. He had visited Will and spent the better part of an hour 
with him and was now phoning to let me know how he thought Will was doing. Now they say a way to, the way to a parent's heart is through their children. Who are we, the, the McKinneys? And yet this man took time and made a visit. Whatever else one might say about him, he made a significant difference in our lives in a tender and vulnerable time. He proved neighbor to our family and to Will in particular. Well, as we look closely at the story of the Good Samaritan, we see Jesus sharing it in answer to a man asking, well, just who is my neighbor? Jesus could have given a legal definition, but he didn't do that. And after telling the story and giving an example, Jesus could have asked, well, which one of these guys did the right thing? He doesn't do that either. The people in Jesus' day could argue that the priest and the Levite both did the only thing that their law allowed. They walked by on the other side. Now perhaps if we give them the benefit of the doubt, maybe they planned to stop at the inn up ahead to alert someone to go and help the man because they weren't able to do that. And perhaps they ran. Jesus doesn't give us any of those details. But what he does do after telling the story is he asks the question, in the story, who proved neighbor to the man by the side of the road? And the questioner, the lawyer, begins to get it, for he doesn't say the Samaritan. He says the one who showed mercy. Jesus invites the man to see and to understand this, that neighbor is not simply a theological construct or a label. Neighbor is actually a verb, one you've probably used as well. You probably speak of neighboring with someone uh, or someone who lives nearby you. Well, if we dig deeper into the story, it might be told, as it might be told, by the man who was left half dead, he might tell us that before that day, he did what others did, and he thought the way others thought, and he spoke the way others spoke. He detested these Samaritans. He avoided being in their presence. And he might even tell us that when he came to and the man who showed him mercy came back around to pay up with the innkeeper, he might have been shocked to learn that it was a Samaritan who saved his life. Before Representative Kinzinger visited Will, well, I had opinions about him, I had judgments, I have a certain way I think of things, and While I don't hold forth about politics very much, if someone had asked me about him, I would have shared whatever politics I was feeling at the moment. But the day he came to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center and spent time and had a substantive conversation with our son, Will, and then bothered to call me afterwards a mama who was broken by what had happened to my son. No matter what anybody said after that, or tried to correct me, and people did, oh, you know, you know Mary Gay, but you know him, and you, I I mean, I had so many people trying to correct me and tell me what to think about the man, but I'm gonna tell you something. Because of what he did, he holds and still holds a place in my heart. He proved neighbor to my son. Well, I have work to do because sometimes I think I can be, I hate to say it, but I think I can be a secret snob. A few days ago, I felt my eyes roll when somebody ran over and wanted a word with me. This is not somebody I usually like to talk to. I kind of tend to brush him off, but then it occurred to me, and maybe it was a Holy Spirit moment, what is going on with you here, Mary Gay? 
Stop. Take the time. And as the man came toward me, my heart began to open rather than shut. And our conversation could not have reached the depth it did if I had politely brushed him off. Maybe at that moment, I became his neighbor. Maybe at that moment, he became mine. Now, I don't know when the next occasion is going to come for you or for me to prove neighbor, but it's likely just around the corner for all of us. And it might be something big, like the Good Samaritan and what he did. Or it might be something little, like giving someone the time of day. But however it comes to us, let's be ready, in the name of Jesus, to prove neighbor. Amen and amen. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join with me as we pray. Holy One, divine healer, into your house we, your family, have come today. We've come to sing and to rejoice and to pray. But perhaps most of all, we're here to stop and take deep breaths in your healing presence. We celebrate and honor the people who have stepped up and stepped in to make Vacation Bible School possible. Thank you for the children and youth who are walking in the ways of Jesus. Our hearts draw near to you as we pray for peace. Show us our parts in the making of it. As fear of the other grabs hold, give us ways in our settings to break down walls and bring people together. Bless those who dare to serve in dangerous places around the globe. Accompany all who suffer in this invasion and bombardment of Ukraine. Let no weapon or purpose fashioned against them prosper. Bring an end to this and all wars, fashioning weapons into instruments for peace and planting. Bless all who give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister in Jesus' name to the suffering, the friendless, those in prison, those who are ill, and all who are struggling under heavy burdens. Especially touch and heal persons who suffer with COVID-19 and its variants. And today we remember Marissa, Mar Marissa Kafka, whose father passed away this past week. This time last week, as Kevin and Irina and Aiden sat down for their Sunday dinner, they had no idea that a gunman would sever their family, leaving Aiden an orphan and a symbol of the consequences of our nation's love affair with death and killing machines. Bless Aiden and his grandparents and all of the survivors of the Highland Park Massacre. Be with the families of those whose lives have been cut short. People whom we name in our hearts, people who have moved into long-term and ongoing concerns that we have, we will hold them in our hearts as we pray silently. Lord Jesus, you taught us to sow seeds and never to give up. You've made us a people in mission that all might know God as you have revealed God in your very being. Strengthen our partnerships with local missions and those that bless people in other places that we may never see. We pray these prayers in the name and for the sake of Jesus, our Lord. And now... We are bold to pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our worship when we have the opportunity to give back to God in gratitude for the good gifts and blessings God provides. If you'd like to support our ministries today, you can give online. Simply go to our website at firstumc.net and scroll down to the red e-giving button. You can give to a variety of funds there from the menu, or simply mail a gift to the church at the address on the screen. Thank you so much for your partnership in ministry and your amazing generosity. Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quite. I'll never get it right But it turns out that the ones you were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul and Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see For the world to see Nobody but Jesus But Moses had stage fright And David brought a rock to his soul fight You lived twelve outside as nobody would have chosen And changed the world The moral of the story is Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear that devil stop talking to me Say, who do you think you are? Nobody trying to tell everybody We're all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world. Again, thank you for joining us and tuning in to our online presence and worshiping with us today. Go forth into your day, go forth into your week, knowing that you walk with Jesus, that Jesus walks with you, and you will have an opportunity to prove neighbor. Amen. Now before we leave, here are a few ways we can put our faith in action and a few announcements to keep you connected with the church. First, we have plans for a groundbreaking on July 24th 
at 11 a.m. on the beautiful Gate Road at the Eden's Garden subdivision. We're going to gather to uh, bless the breaking of the ground and pray for the new church building that will serve as a welcoming home for all of God's people. We'll have both a blessing and light refreshments, so you'll want to be there. Next, we have the Summer Family Market Volunteer Sign-Up. Volunteers are needed for the Summer Family Markets, which will be held in July 22nd and August 19th. Sign up for one or both. Sign-up times are either from 3.30 to 4.50. This is for setting up and serving. And from 4.40 to 6 p.m., this is serving and cleaning up. So can you help greet and hand out numbers to guests, guide guests in how many items to take, help carry and set up tables, provide an activity for children while parents shop? Please invite a friend or neighbor to volunteer with you. Sign up after church or online at the address on this screen, or you can see Ron Barshinger or Tom West for more information. And we still have ongoing need for volunteers at the Summer Lunch in the Park program, Monday through Thursday from 11 to 12.50 at Welsh Park. This is ongoing through August 4th. So thank you for worshiping with us today. Join us please next Sunday, July 17th, for VBS Sunday as our kids and leaders share their learning experiences with us. God bless. It is summer, so it seems like a great time to celebrate neighboring. Jesus said we are to love our neighbors as ourselves, but have you ever wondered how to do that when sometimes we really don't even know our neighbors? Like, do we know the names of the people that live around us? Do we know where they are from, or what kind of work they do, or what sports or activities they enjoy? Do we know the names and ages of their kids? Do we know any of them at a deeper level? Well enough to talk about hopes and dreams or struggles and worries. This last one is a tough one. Not many of us get to that level, but we can start with the easier stuff. Names, basic interests, just making a connection. We know many of you do a lot of wonderful neighboring already, but we also know few of you like to toot your own horn. So this month, we are asking you to tell tales on each other, to keep your eyes and ears open to share the ways you see others doing things that may be as simple as smiling or lending a hand to brighten someone's day. Sometimes you may have a story that has led from a single act of kindness to a much more regular or deeper connection. Let's look for how people are building relationships with neighbors and those we encounter in our daily lives. Please grab a Celebrate Neighboring card or two and share the ways you see people or yourself neighboring. Mission team looks forward to sharing these little stidbits and longer stories with our congregation to inspire and encourage all of us on our neighboring journeys. Jot the story down now and drop it in the collection plate as you leave or return it to us during the week via the mission mailbox, email, or in the collection plate this Sunday or next Sunday. Summer is zipping along, so let's start neighboring and sharing our neighboring stories so we can celebrate all of us. Good morning. Tom and I are here today to give you an update on the campaign and the building of our new church. Nearly two decades ago, uh, we began evaluating our current church, purchasing land, and conducting a capital campaign to raise funds for the new church. During our first campaign, we had commitments totaling nearly two and a half million dollars. After receiving the donations from trusts and other donations to, to this campaign, we currently hold three million dollars for the building of our church. Now Tom will give you an update on the campaign. Good morning. As previously announced, we have set three benchmarks. Can you remember what those were? Let's see, celebration level was 300,000. 
The challenge level was 650,000 and the miracle level was $1 million. We want to thank the many, many people who have spent countless hours working on the 2022 Help Build the Future campaign. And we thank all of you for your prayers throughout this journey. Now we can announce there have been 64 commitments received. Do you believe in miracles? We have now received $1,400,000. In commitment pledges for this 2022 campaign. And we have already received $182,193. Jim will explain further. As Sherry has previously mentioned, Irving Construction has been selected to be the general contractor for the construction of our new church. Irving Construction, the coordinating team, and working with Dan Saavedra, Saavedra Architects, have determined that the cost of our new church to be approximately $4,817,000. A brief summary of the funding we have and will have to pay for the church. We currently hold the $3 million, as I previously mentioned, for the church. Our current campaign, the 2022 Help Build the Future campaign, has commitments totaling $1,423,550, and we have already received donations from non-pledged or non-committed members for $12,478. This, along with the $250,000 match from Foundation, uh, we have, and plus we have already received a donation from the uh, Foundation for an additional $200,000. All this being said, this gives us approximately $4,845,000 to build our new church. This is after making adjustments for deposits, which have already been put into the $3 million and other expenses. The, what this means at this point is we currently reach our long-held goal of not holding a mortgage to build our new church. At this time, I think we need to take time to praise God for answering our prayers. Lord, what do you want to do through us? Hey, Jim, I think there's something missing from this picture. I think you're right, Tom. As you see here, our new church will, in fact, include the music room, the two additional classrooms, and the canopy. This is all thanks to the generosity of our congregation and friends. And most importantly, thanks for your prayers. Please mark your calendars for the groundbreaking ceremony that will take place at 11 a.m. on Sunday, July 24th, following our service. That will be held on the western edge of our Annie Glidden property. Watch for more details to come. Thank you very much.